Hey y'all, hey, what's up? We are here for day six of 29. And today we are going to effortlessly build our financial freedom fund. Because I know how much having money in your bank account and seeing those zeros and those commas, how good that feels, right? And as you are going through this journey of creating your financial love story and falling back in love with your money over this month, building your savings is going to be one of those ways that you feel really loved by your money. Now, if you're someone who has a difficult time with saving, we're going to talk about some ways that you can effortlessly build your savings um, and more strategy in a couple of videos from now. But today we're going to talk about that money that you can use to effortlessly build your savings. So if you're catching this live, put hashtag live, catch on the replay, hashtag replay. Let me know where you're watching from and um, tag your friend, share it, like it, love it, all the good things, right? Um, because I'm going to be going live at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the month of February so that you can follow the tips and the strategies and the suggestions and the things that we talk about over these next 29 days so that you can fall madly in love with your money. Now, for those of you who do not know who I am, I'm Nishaya Richardson. I'm the Play Money Coach. And I work with high achieving professionals who want to learn how to manage their money like a boss so they have more play money to do the things they enjoy. Now, play money. Let's talk about the play money, which is usually in our financial freedom fund. Now, if you notice, I did not say emergency fund. Why? Because I do not plan for emergencies. Um, I really had a shift in my mindset around around my words and my language around money when I read the book, The Secrets of a Millionaire Mind. And uh, I had already started doing some things differently with my finances because I was already a financial coach, right? Um, but I didn't understand the importance of our language and how that really determines like kind of the things that happens to us in our finances. And I really started thinking about the fact that I kept calling my emergency fund, emergency fund, which, or I called it more so my savings, but everyone else around me was calling it their emergency fund. Um, and every now and then I would say it, right? And it wasn't until I read that and he talked about us setting intentions with our words and the power that it has and how, you know, you plan for emergencies, what is naturally going to happen? You have emergencies, right? So that is every time you put money in your emergency fund, for whatever reason, an emergency happens and now you have to take it out. Now, if you've ever experienced that, put a one in the comments because I know most of us has experienced that. Now, no, I'm not talking about you who um, <laughs> didn't have an emergency, but maybe you spent a little extra than what you were planning to. And then you're like, oh, let me just take it out my, my savings because I know it's there. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about truly something happened that was unexpected. Maybe you got a flat tire or something in the house went crazy. Um, something in the house went crazy and you needed that money to use it to fix that thing, or you had to pay someone for an unexpected thing, whatever that is, put a one in the comments if you experienced that emergency, right? Um, so we're going to talk about building your financial freedom fund because we are setting the intention that we are going to be financially free. Now, your definition of what financially free could be totally different from someone else's or even mine, right? Um, and I want you to um, realize that that is okay because maybe you don't want to be a billionaire. You don't want to have that lifestyle. You are good with having a simple life and being able to you know, buy yourself things without having to worry about the price filling up your grocery cart and never having to worry about if you're spending too much money. You want to be able to, you know, go and travel whenever you desire to travel. You want to do those things, but you don't necessarily want to be a billionaire. That is okay, right? So I need you to determine what is your financial freedom and what does that look like? Because that is going to be what you are building your savings for. So one, that is going to keep you motivated because every time you decide like, hmm, <laughs> I don't want to save that $500. I want to use that for something else. You can remember financial freedom. What does that look like? That looks like you being on a beach 
four times a year drinking a pina colada and having unlimited food and um, people serving you and giving you massages and all the things, right? Or that could look like, you know, you spending being able to retire early and being able to watch your grandchildren and not ever having to worry about money, right? Or having, you know, your children worry about who's going to take care of their babies and how they're going to afford daycare because you're able to be there because you've set yourself up in your finances to where you're in a position where you don't have to worry about money because now you have that financial freedom, right? So think about what that looks like for you and map it all out. What does it look like? What does it taste like? What does it smell like? What does it feel like, right? So every time you you start losing your momentum of building your financial freedom fund, i.e. your savings, you can tap into what that is. Now, I do believe that we should all have different savings for different things, right? So yes, you may have a financial freedom fund and you may also have um, a, ho a home maintenance fund. Even if you're living in an apartment, there, there may be things that pop up that you have to pay for that maybe your landlord doesn't cover, right? Um, or you may also have a savings for your renter's insurance or your home insurance, or you may have a savings for your vacation. Now, if you do have savings for these things, get very clear about the purpose of them and what they're for. So if it's a vacation fund, I want you to get clear on what vacation that is for so that you can map out how much is it going to cost you to fly there, whether or not you're going to fly first class or business class or you know economy. Um, are you going to do the best room in, in the resort or are you going to do an Airbnb or, you know, get clear on what that is, where you're traveling to so that you can, um, map out how much that's going to cost. So you know what you're saving for. So again, that's going to be your mo motivation and, um, really keep you excited about building up that savings. So we got clear on, right? Like, what we're going to do, what we're saving for. So let's say we're saving for financial freedom. And let's say that number is, um, let's say, two years worth of our monthly expenses. Because maybe, you know, we work a full-time job and we plan to go in business full-time or we plan to have another uh, thing working for us to where we have money coming in, where we can retire from our full-time job in two years. And we want two years worth of our expenses saved, right? So now we've identified that, we've identified what it's for. Here, I'm gonna give you three ways that you can effortlessly build your savings. Um, the first way is start small, right? Start small and work your way up because this is one of the things that throws people off. So if you're not naturally a saver, which a lot of people are not, right? And sometimes I hear you only live once. If you've heard that before, put a two in the comments, right? Or if you say it, <laughs> put a two in the comments. You may hear somebody say like, you only live once, so I'm gonna spend all my money now, right? There's no reason for me to save because I might die tomorrow and I'm not leaving my money to other people. Well, you may also live another 60 years and then what, right? You want to be prepared. You don't want to be in a space where you constantly have to rely on swiping your credit card or taking out personal loans or asking other people for help or taking um, equity out of your home and all those things. Not to say that those things are bad, right? It's just that we need to be intentional about what we're using those things for and also prepare ourselves and position ourselves so that we are constantly being proactive versus reactive. So being proactive is by planning ahead and building up that savings. So start small and work your way up. So if you're someone that's not already saving, maybe you start with $10 a week, right? Um, and for you, you may be thinking like $10, girl, like <laughs> what am I going to do with that? That's not any, that's not going to do anything. But if you're someone who has a difficult time saving, get in the habit of doing it and get in the habit of to where when you do it, you're not pulling the money back out again, right? You're not finding a reason or finding an excuse to have to use that money. So if that is you, then start with the $10, right? If you're someone that's good with saving and maybe you're already saving, let's say 10% of your income, that's awesome. You don't have to really do any more unless you absolutely want to. But if you feel that you know you want to start accelerating um, that goal that you're working towards in your savings, then maybe you add an extra $50 or extra $100, right? And you start building it up that way. So the first way is start small and then work your way up. 
as you become consistent with it and you see like, okay, this is a habit. I'm good. I'm no longer worried, relying on that $50 or that $100 that I put in my savings. I'm living perfectly fine without it and I'm not missing it. Now you can increase it a little more and a little more and a little more, right? So the third, the, excuse me, the second thing is if you are someone that is paid biweekly, um, I need you to know that you have two extra paychecks every year, minimally, because last year was like 27 pay period. I don't know. It was really weird. But um, you have minimally two extra paychecks every year. So that means if you get paid biweekly, there are two months in the year that you actually get three paychecks. And I need you to be intentional about that third paycheck because my clients, we use the plan ahead method. And when we uh, create their spending plan and that positions them to one where we're planning ahead months at a time. So there's truly no surprises unless it is like something that's absolutely an emergency and we couldn't have planned for it. Um, Also, we can plan ahead for that third paycheck and it's basically free money that allows them to either save more, pay off a little more extra debt, um, put that money towards a vacation, invest it, whatever it is, there is always two free free paychecks in your um, with during the year if you're paid bi-weekly, right? And I believe if you're paid weekly, there is still two months because there's some months where it's like five weeks type thing. So either way, bi-weekly, um, with that third paycheck, you can put that in your savings. You know, obviously you're going to need to take out money for groceries and um, like your gas or your spending to get you to the next, you know, two weeks. But other than that, there should be no bills that you have to pay with that. So therefore, all of that, you can effortlessly build your financial freedom fund and you can do it on top of what you're already saving consistently every month. So now you wonder how um, how you go from, let's say, one month worth of expenses saved to now having three months saved effortlessly, it's by doing things like that, right? So where typically what ends up happening is people get that third paycheck and they're always like, I don't see it. I, it never feels like I have more. For whatever reason, I just can't figure it out. Well, you should be working with Nishaya, that's why. <laughs> but um, you know, you plan ahead. Also bonuses, right? Some of us get bonuses, whether it's quarterly at the end of the year or whenever, if your job gives them, instead of just spending it all, right? Take a portion of that and save it. Now you don't have to necessarily save the whole thing, right? Unless you want to, but take a portion of that, whether you take 50% of it and then Um, 50% of it you save and then the 25% you spend on yourself and then another 25%, maybe you invest it, whatever you want to do with it, right? Take a portion of your bonus and put that in your financial freedom fund, i.e. your savings, right? So that is also going to help you effortlessly build your savings. Now, um, I talk about this because sometimes Um, before people get their bonuses, they don't even think about what they want to do with that money. It's just like, we get it, we spend it and it's gone. And then now we need to wait for the next bonus to come where, no, I need you to be again, proactive, be intentional about money that's coming into your life so that you have a place for it. You have a plan for it because then it's going to allow more money to come into your life and actually want to stay there. Right. Right. So that is another way that you can effortlessly build your savings. That third paycheck, if you're paid bi-weekly, and then also if you get a bonus from your job or your business, right? Because maybe you pay yourself a business um, because you had a really great revenue month, revenue year. Um, and then the last thing is uh, a lot of banks or credit unions, they have um, an option in your, your bank account where you can save the change. So what it does is it automatically takes the change that is left over. So let's say you spend $13.50 and you want to round up so that you actually spent $14. They'll take that 50 cents and put it into your savings. So now your savings is building without you really noticing. It's cents, right? Change here and there. So it's 30 cents here, 75 cents there. Uh, 25 cents here. And then that is constantly building. And that is actually one of the things that also um, Ally, which is a high yield savings account that I use offers, right? It's like, I forgot what they call it. It's something like something to change 
uh, round up or something where they round up and then they move the change into your savings account. So those are actually, I give you four ways <laughs> that you can effortlessly build your savings. Now you see there is a link above for Ally, which is a high yield savings account. Where should your savings be? In a high yield savings account. I believe I talked about this one of these days already, um, but we truly need a high yield savings account to where we're storing our savings. If it is money that we need to access, um, you know, pretty soon, and it's not something that we want to put into an investment account that we know we we're, you know we don't want to touch for years and years and years and years from now, but we're going to need it maybe in the next six months, next year, two years, three years, even four or five years. Um, you may want to look at not may, but you should have a high yield savings account because your money is going to get um, interest while it's sitting in your savings. Now, right now, the the high yield savings interest rates are about four point. 5%, some of them up to 5%, depending on the high yield savings account. But I always recommend Ally. One, it's super fun to use because it's visually appealing. Like it looks really cool. Um, also, it allows you to save, have 10 savings buckets under one savings account. So I have one savings account and I can save for 10 different things at once under that one savings account. So I did uh, include my referral link feel free to use it, right? Uh, we both get bonuses if you use it. I get a bonus, you get a bonus, right? And um, you can continue to refer other people to, to it so that you get more bonuses. So um, check it out. And if you don't want to use Ally, there are a bunch of other high yield savings accounts that you can easily do a little research um, through your search engine, type in high yield savings account, and there'll be a bunch that pops up. So use the one that that fits for you, that makes you feel the most comfortable, but I love Ally and there's my referral link. Use it. <laughs> Why not, right? All right. So that's how you effortlessly build your savings. Start small, work your way up, save that third paycheck or most of it after you have your spending money, you, you know, your, you know, whatever small things you have to um, cover for the, the groceries and things like that. Also, if you get a bonus, whether it's quarterly or annually, um, save some of your bonus and uh, watch those numbers and watch that money in your savings account built up and then make sure, and then you can also save your change so that as you are using your debit card, um, you can save the difference in what you paid. So if you pay 1350, your bank will automatically save 50 cents to round up to $14. So now you have little bits of change in money building up your savings. Um, so y'all, that was how you effortlessly build your savings. So um, your financial freedom fund. So if you are going to try any of these, tell me which ones you're going to try in the comments, right? Um, and then come back tomorrow so we can talk about mastering um, your debt. Now, I know this is a hot topic because <laughs> y'all ladies don't raise your hand and said, listen, debt management and payoff is at the top of my list. And I need to do something ASAP, which is what most of my clients actually um, come to me with is debt and they want to get out of debt and they want to save and they want to be able to manage their money. They want to be able to control their spending. Well, tomorrow we're going to talk about managing your debt and paying it off um, so that one, you can have more play money and two, you can really start embracing and living that financial freedom life that you truly desire. So yeah. I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, yeah, I'll be live. And we're going to talk about debt management and mastering that and payoff, right? So I'll see y'all tomorrow. Have an awesome evening. Stay safe. Later.